DNA replication is very simple. You take double-stranded DNA and you split the strands apart and through complementary base pairing you create two new identical strands. A more complex version of the story has a whole bunch of enzymes involved such as helicase, DNA polymerase, primase, a funny enzyme called exonuclease, as well as topoisomerase. Chapter 1 of DNA replication is to answer the question, why replicate? And we replicate to reproduce, to grow, and to regenerate. During human reproduction, sperm and egg meet, and they become a zygote. The zygote does many rounds of DNA replication in order to grow a new human being. A starfish, when it loses its arm, does DNA replication to grow a new arm, and the arm grows a new starfish through regeneration, which happens in plants as well as fungi. When cells divide, they do DNA replication. When parent cells turn into daughter cells, then the parents disappear and the daughters are left. DNA replication must happen for the parent cell to distribute DNA to the daughters. So the parent has 10 pieces of DNA and the 10 pieces replicate into 20. So that 10 pieces go to each daughter. Different organisms have different numbers of DNA. Humans have 23 pairs or 46 pieces of DNA in every cell of their body. DNA has a five prime end and a three prime end. DNA is a helix, a ladder, and the ladder is made up of nucleotides. Nucleotides fit together in a ladder structure that is antiparallel with hydrogen bonds and phosphodiester links. We give the ends of the nucleotides names, the five prime end or the three prime end, five prime refers to the phosphate end, and the three prime refers to the sugar end. In fact, when you put any number of nucleotides together to make a DNA ladder structure, then each corner would be a five prime or a three prime end. You can see that the five prime end has the phosphate sticking up and the three prime end has the sugar. So DNA replication happens by unzipping the strand and constructing the strand by using the old one as a template. The polymerase, DNA polymerase, grabs nucleotides that are floating around the cell to create the new identical strands. We say that DNA replication is semi-conservative because these new strands each keep or conserve a part of the original strand. Let's talk about RNA. For DNA replication to happen, we need a little help from RNA. RNA stands for ribonucleic acid. Remember that DNA is deoxyribose sugar with a phosphate and a nitrogen base. RNA is a ribose sugar with a phosphate and a nitrogen base. So they're very similar. The difference is in the nitrogen bases. DNA bases are A, T, C, and G. But RNA bases are A, U, C, and G uracil instead of thymine. RNA can form a complementary strand to the template of DNA. So suppose this is a piece of DNA. So if we take out one side of DNA, then RNA polymerase can go and construct a complementary strand of RNA.
And now we have a single strand of RNA that was made from the DNA. So DNA versus RNA. Remember that DNA is a double strand with phosphodiester links and a hydrogen bond, and RNA is a single strand. But that single strand can be formed from the DNA. What enzymes synthesize DNA and RNA during DNA replication? It's DNA polymerase and RNA polymerase. The RNA polymerase's name is primase. DNA polymerase builds the new strand by attaching the 5' phosphate end to the 3' end. And it makes a phosphodiester link. So DNA polymerase reads the complementary strand and fetches the correct nucleotide. So, for example, it'll fetch a C to fit a G and make a phosphodiester link and a hydrogen bond. It'll read the C and say, hmm, I think I need a G. And it'll grab a G and fit it with that C. And finally, it'll fetch a T to fit the A. So to recap, this is our ladder structure of DNA. We have complementary base pairs, and each of the corners are called five prime or three prime. Let's draw this. In shorthand, we can draw it like this. And we can even reorient this on its side like this. And now we're ready for the more complex version of DNA replication. Here we go. So DNA replication, the steps are, number one, helicase unzips the strand. The primase puts down the RNA primer as a strand of RNA, and DNA polymerase makes the complementary strand. And the finishing touches are made by ligase, exonuclease, and topoisomerase. So step one, we unzip the strand. And the unzipping happens with helicase. And next, primase comes along and fits an RNA primer on the top strand, one of them, and several RNA primers on the bottom strand. Notice the top one only has one primer and the bottom one has several. I've drawn two of them here. This primer has a five prime and three prime end. And helicase is moving constantly in a single direction. DNA polymerase three then comes along, attaches to the three prime end and synthesizes the new strand in the five prime to three prime direction. This polymerase three is following helicase. The top strand is therefore called the lead strand. Meanwhile, DNA polymerase three on the bottom strand has to move in the opposite direction. And therefore, this strand is known as the lag strand. Once again, DNA polymerase will move in the five prime to three prime direction. Exonuclease comes along and it eats the RNA primer and it leaves behind fragments of DNA that we call Okazaki fragments. DNA polymerase one then comes along and fills in where the primers were, replaces the primer with DNA. In fact, exonuclease and DNA polymerase one, they work together. Exonuclease removes the primers and DNA polymerase one fills the gap with DNA. At the end, there's one more gap left. Phosphodiester links need to form, and ligase seals all the breaks with the phosphodiester links. What's happening downstream of the helicase? Well, helicase is unzipping a double helix. And when this happens, it, it causes a supercoiling of the strand. So topoisomerase must relieve the pressure. It does this by snipping and gluing the phosphodiester links to relieve the pressure on this helix. 
We're nearly to the end of replicating DNA, as you see. And now we have two new strands of DNA.